Hey guys, VBAD here with another V-Place, taking a look at the J7W2 Tier 9 Japanese multi-roll aircraft, and while it is a multi-roll aircraft, much like its younger brother, the J7W1, we're still looking at pretty impeccable turning speeds, especially considering that as you get into the jet age, most aircraft are going to sacrifice maneuverability for airspeed, and while there is still going to be some nasty contenders out there, such as the MiG-19, or sorry, the Yak-19 and the Yak-30, uh, this thing still will be able to have a good momentary turn against most aircraft. Now you can see I'm actually running a clean, no bombs here, but that's mostly because in this game mode, the best thing I could hope to achieve with the bombs under the wings is being able to get maybe a bombardier and drop in on one of the enemy ground attackers. But uh, being that we have these big 30s in front, we should be just fine. You should already note that the rate of fire seems much higher than what we've seen in the past with the, its predecessor, but this aircraft actually has some pretty robust fire rate, which allows it to be able to get a lot of damage out fairly quickly on the enemy. We have a player control IL-40 here. The guns behave much like they do on the tier 10 MiG-20, uh, sorry, the ME-262, rather. MiGs, Yaks, calling everything by the wrong name right now. But in all fairness, we are in quite a fight right now. But the higher rate of fire is going to give you just a little bit more oomph, and we actually have a slight increase in range up to 2,100 feet in some change, which makes things a little bit easier. By stripping the bombs off, it actually gives us a little bit more speed too, which allows us to be able to close the distance a little bit better, and allows me to be able to knock out that aircraft as he's trying to impede my team from doing their good work over here against these bombers. If I stay in one location, we will be destined to get schwacked by that TA, but just a brushing pass, look how much damage we've already done to this heavy fighter. One of the things I noticed in this game mode is if you spend a lot of your time just shooting down hostile aircraft as they're coming up on the rear of these bombers, your heavies will end up doing a lion's share of the damage needed. So trust in your bots. I think you might be surprised at what they're able to do. go. Still a bomber somewhere? There we go. Speaking of highly maneuverable yaks, here's one right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave him to our ally. Somebody's already on his tail. Come on, friendly. Get him. Lost our engine, but our teammates did manage to take him out, so that's good. Heading over to that bomber flight. We do have a relatively low altitude based on the multi-roll nature of this airframe. go. He blinked first, gave us a good opportunity. Letting those guns cool off is going to be paramount if you want to get the best effect out of them.
They only managed to get three through. Does not mean the game's over. We still have an opportunity here. Kind of expected that to happen at this point. <laughs> hey friend. But uh, we're going to have to get back out there and try and do our best to defend those AA sites. It takes a little bit of time to get used to these guns, but once you get a good handle on them, they are quite the force to be reckoned with. We're getting some phantom rounds there again. Look at that. Still getting a hit from something. Run into a lot of that lately. I think that there's just so much happening here that there might be some server side lag on some of this lit mac on fire there and we managed to burn him out another air defense aircraft eliminated or sorry a uh, ground attacker killing our air defense As you can see, the amount of damage that this thing can pump out is pretty staggering. This is going to be 1200 damage per second, which while isn't tier 10 damage for heavies, it is pretty close. Being that if I'm not mistaken, I think it's about 1400 damage per second. Whew, hey friend. <laughs> All right, Mac is back in his IL-40. When we keep a lot of the AA guns up, it's gonna help attrit a lot of the health off of the bombers as they're coming in. And since both bomber flights need to traverse this area, it's actually gonna give us a bit of a leg up. These just keep rolling in one by one. Sometimes they'll shoot at you, so you gotta be a little bit careful. These bots and the players now. In fact, it looks like this one is going after one of our allies. Whew. It's the second time we've had a close encounter with that aircraft. You don't want these guns to overheat because they take forever to cool off, so make sure that you're pulse firing them. Yak-19, if I can get a hit on him. Yep, we took out his control surface. And we're able to knock him out pretty effectively. That's the 183 again, doing some boom and zoom passes on us. We have to make sure we're not ignoring him. Got him. There's another fighter here, 152. Did we take out the 152? We did. All right, cool. Uh, the bombers seem to be hurting pretty bad. There's only four and five between the two groups, respectively. Respectively. And then uh, we'll hop back in and try and give our team a hand here. There's still another AA site for that other flight to come through, but this flight above us, they're pretty much toast. So let's go ahead and head towards the other AA site. We'll dip that nose, try and get some speed. It is nice to have a jet-powered aircraft, despite the fact that we have not sacrificed our maneuverability for speed. So we actually don't have a ton of speed, but we are still faster than we were in its predecessor. There, the gun's overheated there, and I wasn't able to get him back up and running. Let's try and turn... Is that that Tempest again? I think it was. Oh no, it was Graham. The bomber flight has been eliminated. Should be two AA sites respawning shortly.
This does really well at countering GAs. I think it's pretty evident based on what we've seen so far. But in turning engagements, it also can hold its own. There we go. Heading for the middle. There's some more of those phantom rounds hitting our aircraft. Last flight coming through. It's actually going to be three flights, two groups of nine on the periphery, which don't have to contend with AA sites. We're going to sit here and defend. That's going to be our role today. One pass, kill. That's what this thing can do. Oop, where are you? Taking a lot of tail gunner fire here. Looks like that 109TL really wanted me. Dipping that nose for a little bit of speed, hammering the boost. Gotta love the crit damage coming out of this thing. Locked in the ace, not too hard on this game mode. There we go. Again, more ground attackers, just don't be directly in front of them so they don't do that to you. Phew, that's what I was afraid of. All right, we'll have to come back in. Which side has it worst? Is it five up north and way more down to the south? Let's go down to the south for our respawn location. No matter how well you think you're doing, you can always find yourself in a difficult situation. Coming up from underneath usually yields better results. They don't expect you to be coming in. So anybody defending gives you a little bit more of a chance. Guns have overheated like we talked about. We don't want that to happen. Oh, there's that 109 again. Got him. Looks like a couple of bombers made it through, but we're gonna put the gravity of our effort on these center bombers. There's only four respawns left for the team, so this is gonna be a hard fought fight. Good news is they're coming into a full AA site right now. Taking out targets as enemy aircraft is almost as value as taking out bombers right now. 
because the respawn is going to be very prohibitive for them. I said let's come in from underneath. Oh, if we can kill one more bomber, we've locked in the victory. They're running low on aircraft right now. It looks like Mac finally got in on me, and it looks like we've won the match. We'll go ahead and hop back in, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to be just fine. The thing about flying in defense is when you're doing defense, like we are right here, you pretty much have to wait for all the... Well, you do. You have to wait for all the bomber waves. There's nothing you can do. But on the offense, you can definitely win really quickly, which isn't that advantageous for you, so... I've been finding that there's enough people in ground attackers and bombers that they'll always be on the offensive, so we'll always end just fine, like in this very same situation. Chance to get a few more points. He's dropped a bomb. Whoop. Get that nose over. Can I get the kill or is this game over? Oh, one more kill. Nice. And game. Oof. That was a good one. Myriad of medals all the way across the board. Uh, hopefully this highlighted the capabilities of this airframe. We'll go ahead and head to the hangar and take a closer look at what the differences are between the W2 and the W1 and what we have to look forward to with the W3. Uh, but this is kind of a true multi-role. It's got decent maneuverability. In fact, it's got some of the best maneuverability for a multi-rolling game. But at the same time, it's not going to win a dogfight against every aircraft. Those uh, Yak-19s and the Yak-30s are going to pose a serious problem for us. <laughs> so, Vraden said, uh, thanks for the carry. Uh, hardly a carry, man. Your score, 34,000 to 37,000. That's just minor it's some pocket change difference between our scores so we managed to get 27 kills in that battle and you can just see the list of crit damage i mean granted this is a crazy long match but this list of crit damage is absolutely immense and it's due to those 430s now what I wanted to show you was the comparison between this aircraft and its predecessor and these are the guns that we get fully upgraded that carry over to the W3 and these are not the guns we are looking for. There we go. These are the top guns on the J7W1. First thing you'll note is that the damage per second is drastically different. 80 damage per second per gun is a very significant difference between these two airframes. On top of that, the rate of fire is an extra 30 rounds per minute, and you get about 200 feet more range. It doesn't seem like a lot now, but when you see over on the right-hand side, it might not be its max effective range, but it can shoot out in lo and log hits out to 2,625 feet, which gives you the reach to be able to get early crit damage that way you can really get them once they get in close to you. So if you can crit somebody, you can take out their pilot, take out some control surfaces, maybe take out their engine, and now you've got the advantage in that turning fight. Now, as I said before, the maneuverability on this is pretty good. You're looking at 10.6 with the current setup we have right here, which is equivalent to that of a turn time of an altitude fighter. So not too shabby. Now, the bombs on this are actually fairly good. Just like its predecessor, you're looking at the exact same bomb loadout with a reload of about two minutes. That's a very respectable multi-role reload time. So if I was flying this in any game mode aside from this one, I would definitely put the bombs on because I find myself spending a lot of time over a key site taking it early and then I can hold it because I am able to turn with most of the other aircraft. And for the aircraft I can't turn against, I just get those shots on early so that way we can knock them out. The rate of fire increase is a lot better. It makes it feel 
like you're able to lock in those hits a lot more often just by the volume of fire. So do highly recommend that if you're on the W1, at least go to the W2 and try out the top engines. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what this thing has to offer. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy the review of the J7W2, and I'll catch you on the next one. Like a soldier, I keep on moving forward, always getting closer, I'm marching till it's over.